Hey guys, um, in my last video, I discussed about the concepts of dimensional modeling. If you haven't seen that video, I encourage you to go back and see that again. In this video, we are going to actually take you through the process of dimensional modeling. We will take a business scenario and then model it step by step so that you can see for yourself how dimensional modeling can be used in the real life business scenario. So let's get started. Let's take a business scenario and let's see how we can model it using a dimensional modeling technique. So imagine um, you are the owner of a shop, okay, and this is your shop and uh, let's also suppose that there are many different products that you sell through this shop. So. This is your product one, this is your product two, this is your product three. All these products are there in your shop which you sell through your shop, all right? And of course, there are many different customers who frequent your shop on a daily basis. These are your customers who uh, come to buy products from you. So if we have this, this particular scenario in your business, how will we model this using a dimensional modeling, right? That's what we are trying to figure it out, okay? So the first thing that we have to do in order to do the dimensional modeling is to figure out which, are, which entities are the dimension in this case, right? Well, we have uh, lots of different products, right? Um, so product is one type of entity. We have customers. Customers are also another different entity and we have shop right so this product shop and customers these are all uh, different entities which we can model through the dimension so you can look back at the definition of dimension to identify that these are the dimensions right and what are the measures that we need to model so if the customers are going to the shop and buying the products then the amount of product that they're buying that's 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 an that's a measure right that's something that we need to capture as a measure right amount of product they're buying or you know the 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 total revenue that your shop is generating all these types of numerical information are the measures that we need to also capture right once we have understood that these are my dimensions and these are my um, uh, measures um, the first thing that we have to do is to put the dimensions in the dimension table so in this case we can right off the bat we can create a product dimension table because we have many different products and obviously we need to store this product information in some kind of table right so let's say this is our product dimension table and we will have a product key this is to identify each product in our uh, dimension model uniquely and then the product dimension table will also have all the other product related attributes so for example we might have the product name over here we might have the product price over here all these are the product related attributes that we would like to capture in the product dimension table uh, similarly we can have a customer dimension table as well so let's build a customer dimension table just like our product dimension table um, we will have a we will have a customer key which will be the primary key for this table so let's put a customer key attribute or column in this table and then in the customer dimension table all the usual customer related attributes will be there so we can have for example customer name or customer I don't know customer date of birth or gender or whatever we want to capture about the capture uh, about the customer right so all those information will be in the customer dimension table now after we have this product and customer dimension table let's see what other dimension table we will require well before we can actually capture the measure we also need to understand at what point in time that particular transaction between the product and customer occurred which means that we will require a time dimension table so let's let me maybe over here i can put a time dimension table and just like any other dimension table this time dimension table 
should also have a time key so that's the primary key of this table and then um, this against this time key we can capture different time related attributes for example what day is it or what month is it or maybe what year is it right all this information we can capture in this time dimension table once we have this product and customer and time dimension tables ready we need to create the fact table so let's build our fact table over here so we'll create a fact table like this and what are the attributes that we are going to put in this fact table so if you remember from my previous video the fact table actually contains the primary keys of the individual dimension tables so look at our product dimension table in the product dimension table the product key is the primary key right this is a primary key over here right similarly in the customer dimension table we have the customer key which is the primary key and so on in time dimension table right so the primary keys of the dimension tables need to come to the fact table as the foreign key okay so we'll have a product key over here all right we'll have a customer key over here we'll have a time sorry key over here these are the various different um, dimension table keys that we must put in our fact table in order to capture the relationship between all these dimension tables then what is the measure that we are capturing so let me by the way write it down as a fact table right so this is our fact table and we can call it um, maybe the sales fact right because we are putting the sales information in this fact table so so now the question is what sales information do you want to capture well for this example uh, take the simplest sales measure that you can capture maybe you want to capture the amount of goods sold right amount of product sold so in that case amount may be a measure that you want to capture in in this in this fact table okay so now moving back to the example of our business over here let's take an example of a actual customer uh, going to your going to your shop and buying something right so let's say customer c1 over here this customer and let me just quickly change my color of my pin all right so the customer over here maybe this customer went to your shop and uh, um, and maybe he bought the product p1 all right so in the in this particular fact table how will the data will be captured the data will look like this so we'll have a customer key column we'll have a product key column we'll have a date column and we'll have a amount column right so the customer in this case is customer c1 and he or she is buying product p1 and maybe this transaction occurred on 10th january and the amount was the amount of product p1 that the customer c1 bought was let's say five all right and on the same day uh, maybe there is another customer right maybe customer c2 also bought product p1 um, on the same day and c2 bought only one product right so these information as you can see over here will be actually captured in your fact table right so the customer individual customer that we that you have over here these customers are all part of the customer dimension table over here right so this is the customer key that that's the same customer key that you have in the fact table uh, right here right then this product key that you see over here that's the same product key that comes from the product table right here and so basically what this data tells you is that the customer c1 on 10th january bought product p1 and how much product did customer c1 buy um, 
it was five right so it, it can be five pieces of product p1 or it can be some maybe five kilogram of certain product or whatever right it doesn't matter so you, you have to keep the unit of this particular product as well uh, but for the sake of simplicity let's say that this customer just bought five pieces of this particular product all right so oh by the way over here in the date i kept it as 10th january but actually if you see over here the 10th january might be represented with a different time key so for example if the day is 10 and the month is january which is like 01 right and let's say the year is 2021 you can choose to create a time key with the format of let's say y y y y m m d d right and then this 10th january date will basically just become 2021 um 01 01 is the month uh 10 right so this 10 is the day portion over here right 01 is the month portion here and 2021 is the year portion right so this key uh, this particular key may actually look like something different it may not look like 10 january it might uh, be numeric and it might look like like 2021010 right but you got the idea so basically that's how the the product uh, dimension table should look like important thing to basically see from this picture is that how your product keys are flowing from one particular table to another table right so the product key is coming from uh, the relationship between product and sales fact table is that product key is sort of a parent of the sales fact table because the primary key from the product uh, table um, actually goes to the the as a foreign key to your fact table right similarly the primary key from the customer table comes to the um comes as a foreign key to to uh, to, to your fact table so so this key over here is a foreign key this key over here is a foreign key and this key over here is a foreign key right but they are related to the primary keys of the corresponding dimension table or when you design all these tables and actually view it in some kind of data modeling tool um, usually this whole thing looks like something like this so like you have the fact table in the center right and the fact table is connected to many different dimension tables and so let's say this is a this is a product dimension table this is a customer dimension table this is a time dimension table there could be other tables as well right maybe you have many different shops in which case there will be a shops table as primary keys from all these tables will flow into the fact table and if you look at this picture right now so these are the primary keys over here and then there will be measures over here and this is your fact table right and these are all the dimension maybe i should have drawn the fact table with different color these are all the dimension table and and inside uh, and in the center you have the fact table sitting over here right so if you look at this picture this picture often looks like a star and therefore the schema is called the star schema okay so this is a very standard uh, dimensional modeling schema design which we call star schema in the in my next video i'll create a different schema which is known as snowflake schema and also tell you why snowflake schema is required and in who, what which case uh, you might need to snowflake your star schema um, but that's that's a topic for the next video in this video i just wanted to give you a practical example where we started from a real business situation on our left hand side and from starting from this business situation we wanted to convert this business into a dimensional model what did we do we identified number one we identified the dimension um, like product dimension customer dimension etc after we identified the dimensions we created different table structures for these dimensions once we created the table structures for the dimensions 
we established the connection between these dimension tables uh, via the fact table, right? And while designing the fact table, we also had to determine what is the measure that we want to store in our fact table. So in, in our case, this is the measure that we are storing in our fact table, right? The amount is the measure that we are storing in, the, in, in our fact table. So those are the main uh, crucial steps for modeling your data um, in dimensional modeling. If you guys are interested, I might create some more videos with some uh, different business situations and show you how dimensional modeling can be used uh, in disparate uh, business cases. You might take cases from the finance world or from insurance world and see how uh, dimensional modeling is used on those, um, you know, on those kind of businesses. So that's it for now. And I'll, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. It sound right, boy.